Give me an S. Give me an O. Give me another S. Give me an A. What does that spell? Interoperability. Okay, yes, we are talking about interoperability, but specifically VITA Open Standards and SOSA, which stands for Sensor Open Systems Architecture. Not sure what SOSA is best suited for, the role that VITA standards play in OpenVPX, or what particular VITA standard would be best for your next application. Well, you've come to the right place, my friends, because that's what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Interoperability is a very valuable aspect of military and aerospace electronic designs and is cornerstone to VITA, OpenVPX, and SOSA. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Eddie Alexander from Amphenol SV and I explore Amphenol SV's portfolio of Vita RF solutions. We also examine the role that SOSA plays in the development of military and aerospace systems and how you can utilize Amphenol SV's Vita RF solutions in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol SV. Hi, Eddie. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thank you. So we're talking about enabling an open VPX world today. But Eddie, before we dig into the details, can you set the stage for us? What kind of open VPX solutions does Amphenol offer? Um, I'm glad you asked. Amphenol offers a wide variety of open VPX products, including Vita 46 connectors, which are RF via over wafers, Vita 66 fiber optic modules, and Vita 67 RF through coax modules. For Vita 46, you can get these products from Amphenol Aerospace. Vita 66, you have a couple options in Amphenol FSI, Amphenol Aerospace, Amphenol High Speed, and also Amphenol SV Microwave. We all supply different portions of this specification. And then we have Vita 67, and you can get that directly from Amphenol SV Microwave. And that's where I will spend the most of my time today. Excellent. Okay, so let's talk about Vita 67. Give me some more details about that. So within Vita 67, you have three dot specifications. So you have Vita 67.1, dot two, and dot three. Vita 67.1 and dot two are more so legacy specifications. Within dot one, you have a half width four port module, and dot two gives you a eight port full width module. So these modules are pretty rigid. What you see is what you get. On the plug in side, you have a cabled connection with your floating. SMPM contact. And on the backplane side, you actually have an adapter of sorts that transitions through the backplane. So as I mentioned, within Vita 67.1 and .2, your floating contact is located on your plug-in side. This only allows the user to have cabled connections on your plug-in module. Whereas in Vita 67.3, your floating contact is reallocated to your backplane module. This allows the user to plug in module users to have either an edge launch connection or a cabled connection going onto their board. And the float is then translated to the back plane where there's more space to accommodate it. Excellent. Now, can you give me some more details about Vita 67.3 SMPM? Yes, great. Yeah, so Vita 67.3 SMPM, on the plug in side, you have your rigid connections. That allows to have either an adapter that transitions from a bullet to an edge launch on your board or your mezzanine, or you could have a cabled connection. At SV Microwave, we have 047 and 085 cables. So these connections are snapped directly into the modules. Now, on the backplane is where you have your floating contact. You have your standard backplane module, and you have either a floating contact going to 047 cable, or a floating contact going to 086 cable. Now, Eddie, how does this solution compare with an SMPS solution? So an advantage of Vita 67.3 is the adaptability of the interfaces. So as in Vita 67.1 and 2, 
the SMPM is transitioned into the dot three, but users wanted a more dense solution to allow more RF connections in the same form factor. And that's where SMPS kind of takes advantage. What you see here are both the SMPM and SMPS backplane interfaces. One thing to note about SV's unique SMPM and SMPS backplane contacts, um, we have a removable adapter on a front end, which allows the user to swap out the front interface of the connector if there's any damage without replacing the entire cable assembly. So using the SMPS, you get a 33% reduction in diameter, which increases your RF density. Great. So, Eddie, can you give me some more details about this solution? What about a backplane module or a plug-in card? So, similar to SMPM, SMPS within Vita 67.3, on the plug-in side, all of your rigid connections are here. This gives the user the option of going directly to an edge launch connector with the adapter bullet edge launch connectors or having a cabled 047 or a cabled 085 now, on the backplane side, your float is still retained here, and you have either 047 or 085 cable solutions coming out of your backplane. Okay, so what kind of sizes are we talking about when it comes to this module? So the unique thing about Vita 67.3, which differentiates itself from Vita 67.1 and .2, is the backplane modules are fully defined modules that are blank templates, which allows the user to implement and determine how many ports and where they want the ports to be located. So within the dot three specification, we have your R full width module, which is called a module C in 67.3, and it's called an aperture H within Vita 65.1. And you can see the full width cutout location, which is always the same, no matter what port allocations you use. Then we also have the half width module. Within 67.3, it's considered mod D. And within Vita 65.1, it's considered aperture J. You have your standard cutout locations for this module. Last, we have our one and a half width modules. Within Vita 67.3, these are considered module E's. Or within Vita 65.1, these are considered your aperture Ks. Cool. Now, Eddie, do we have more than one option when it comes to cabling here? Yes. The uniqueness about Vita 67.3 and particularly SV Microwaves contacts, these can come cabled in 047 Flex, 085 Flex. We have a special 087 Low Loss variant of our 085 Flex. And then we also have, for unique situations, 047 Super Flex which increases the bend of our standard 047 flex cable. Okay, so what about Vita 66, like you mentioned earlier? That standard contains fiber optic solutions, right? Correct. Vita 66 contains fiber optic solutions, and Vita 67 contains RF via coax solutions. We determined a lot of users wanted a kind of hybrid solution where they could have the fiber and their RF all in the same module. And that's where Vita 66.5 comes into play. What is shown here are actually full width or one and a half width modules with a 14 port SMPM and 3MT configuration or a 19 port SMPS and a 3MT configuration. These MTs allow your fiber optic connections to go from the backplane to the plug-in card while maintaining your RF connections. All four of these modules that are shown here are backplane and plug-in modules, and these modules are actually compliant to the SOSA specification. All right, so speaking of SOSA, for my audience who may not know, give us some background on SOSA. SOSA originates from MOSA, which is a government initiative that required all industry partners, the Army, Navy, Air Force, and intelligence, to start developing more open systems. SOSA is a combination of the industry, DOD, and academic groups that help develop a unified open system architecture for radar, signal intelligence, EWs, comms, and supporting business models. One key attribute of SOSA is to allow the military to have faster, interoperable products across the board and with reduced lead times. SV Microwave has been a key member within Vita, which in turn has made us a critical partner within the SOSA specification. 
Well, Sosa has come along and cherry-picked a couple of these slot profiles to pull into the specification and kind of standardize certain configurations across the industry. Excellent. Now, Eddie, what would a Sosa backplane look like and what kind of configurations would you generally see? Right here, I have an illustration of a typical Sosa backplane. A Sosa backplane could come in all shapes and sizes, but what I've shown is a 12-slot backplane which has two switches for data and control planes, two IO intensive slots, seven payload slots, and one PNT timing slot. Five of these slots accept a full width Vita 67.3 module. And that's one thing I just wanted to highlight here. So if you look on the top of this wire of this routing diagram, you can see Vita 67.3C. That tells the user to use a full width Vita 67.3 module in this location. So what we have illustrated next is a block diagram of the routing diagram that was shown previously. You can still see the two switches, two IO intensive slots, the seven payload slots, and the one PNT timing slot. Next shown is an actual representation of this block diagram. You can see how the user has a lot of freedom and determining how many RF ports they would like per slot depending on its functionality. All right, so interoperability is at the heart of SOSA, right? What would a real-world application look like? So I have an example. Let's pretend we have a vendor that makes an electronic warfare payload module. That vendor sells it to company A and company B. Let's just call company A blue and company B red. Company A makes the box that goes into ground vehicles, a radar system, or maybe a shipboard application. Whereas Company B makes a box that goes into UAVs, rotary systems, or jet fighters. Let's pretend the DOD mission has changed. They no longer need an EW payload module. Because of SOSA's interoperability, the DOD is able to go to a different vendor. Let's say they need signal intelligence now and source a signal intelligence model and use that in the same boxes across all the platforms shown. It's SOSA's end goal. All right, so Amphenol has quite a few SOSA-approved solutions, right? Correct. Particularly with Amphenol SV Microwave, we offer a range of SOSA line and SOSA-approved products from cable assemblies, connectors, modules, and adapters. So what if my audience needs a custom Vita configuration? Can you help them there as well? Of course we can. Keeping it in, in the spirit of openness within Vita, SV Microwave offers custom configurations for your I.O. bulkhead connectors, if you want to go to a multi-port, or if you want to go to a 38999, we also offer unique cable transitions, including our Converge RF product line. Great. Now, if my audience needs some help putting together the best cable for their design, can you help them here as well? Yes, we can. So we understand there are a lot of new users when it comes to Vita and Sosa products. So SV Microwave offers an online cable builder where you could build a custom cable configuration using Vita Contact, TOL 47, and maybe going into an SMA, and test it out in your application to determine if you have the correct size or length needed. A benefit of SV Microwave's online cable builder is that the customer receives their cable within 10 business days. Cool. Now, what other resources does Amphenol offer for Vita and Sosa designs? Within Amphenol, we offer Vita presentations either in-house or via web. We have a Vita 67 product portfolio we offer Sosa app notes, and we also have product filters on our website. Either type in Vita or Sosa to get to all the products that you need. And last but not least, we have product explainer videos directly on our website or on Amphenol's YouTube page. Excellent. Well, Eddie, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol SV. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. 
You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>